Do you want your house back? Take it! A violent mob attacked the U.S. Capitol on January 6th and disrupted the vote to certify the 2020 presidential election after President Trump urged them on at a rally. MPD talked to uh, Capitol Command. Uh, I'm just advising you that uh, the MPD has declared this a breach at the Capitol as well as a riot at the Capitol. A Capitol Police officer was killed and four rioters died in the chaos, one shot by Capitol Police. The Wall Street Journal analyzed hours of video footage of the pro-Trump mob, as well as emergency responder scanner audio from the riot, and spoke to security experts, including a former head of the Capitol Police, Terrence Gaynor, to better understand how a mob of thousands overran police and attacked the nation's capital, threatening the safety of the highest-ranking officials in American government. The Journal found that the Capitol Police failed both strategically and operationally to secure the building. Capitol Police and D.C. Metropolitan Police did not respond to multiple requests for comment. In a previous statement, the Capitol Police said its officers were heroic given the situation they faced. Their union said the officers lacked backup and equipment to control the protesters. It began at a rally, challenging the presidential election results. And we fight. We fight like hell. And if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. By around 12.20 p.m., hundreds of raucous protesters were making their way to the Capitol. While some headed for the east side, the majority approached directly from the west. At 12.52, the protesters encountered their first police presence on the northwest side of the Capitol. Let's go! We can see only eight Capitol Police officers. None are in riot gear. They're standing behind a temporary metal barrier. We tell you both, you back off. You back off. This type of movable barrier is meant to signal that an area is off limits, not to stop a wave of violent protesters. The protesters quickly become aggressive and easily push through the barriers. It's clear that Capitol Police were not prepared for this type of crowd. The small group of officers are quickly overwhelmed and need to fall back. Capitol Police Chief Stephen Sund, who has since resigned, said in a previous statement that officers responded valiantly when faced with thousands of individuals involved in violent, riotous actions. The number of rioters is growing as they rush the base of the Capitol building. Just a few minutes later, by 1257, we can see Capitol Police scramble to form a skirmish line further up the Capitol stairs to prevent any further advance. A Capitol Police Civil Disturbance Unit, or CDU, arrives to strengthen the line. These officers are more heavily equipped with helmets, body armor, and batons. They're also trying to spot the most threatening actors and any ringleaders. Visible in the sea of rioters are individuals wearing military-style gear with Kevlar vests. Some have potential makeshift weaponry, like this bat and these flags. And orange-colored tape and hats that indicate that groups may be coordinating their actions. At 1.10, about 10 minutes after the CDU arrived, the violence escalates. The mob begins to brawl with the officers. Here, a flag is thrown hitting an officer in the head. Experts we spoke to say another riot platoon should have been on the scene by now. Instead, we can see only a DC Metropolitan Police bike unit has arrived as reinforcement. These units are called because they can get into crowded locations quickly, and their helmets, bikes, and other gear offer some protection. Rushing to reestablish the dividing line, they deploy pepper spray but some of the mob counter with bear spray, a sign that they expected a fight. Multiple uh, officers injured at the Capitol West Side. At At 1.35, we see more Metropolitan Police on the scene, attempting to aid the Capitol officers on the fast weakening line. No more backup arrives, and the officers endure over an hour of assault from the mob, barely holding on. 
At 1.41, we hear police put out a call that is used to signal that a unit is being overwhelmed. Broken arrow. There's a unit on citywide with a priority. Yeah, they're coming over the capital. Broken arrow. By 2.28, more people are breaking through the skirmish line, forcing officers to chase them down and further weakening the line. Then, after nearly an hour and a half of hostilities, the last line of defense between the rioters and the lawmakers inside finally breaks apart entirely, sending the scene into chaos. An officer is pushed off a ledge where, just below him, a group of officers are pinned and assaulted with a fire extinguisher. More officers fall back. USA! And once the skirmish line on the west side of the Capitol fails, the mob storms the building. As the scene spirals further out of control, the mob beats a fallen officer on the ground and drags him down the steps. An emerging timeline shows requests and approvals for more police help happening too late and too slow at every turn. Verbal approval to deploy the D.C. National Guard was not given until 3 p.m., about 30 minutes after rioters breached the Capitol. 